Greetings friends around the world, you're listening to Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sashevich, welcome. Dear friends, as we speak, 250 million of, are affected by massive bomb cycle of snow. Are you aware of that? On December 25th, BBC, the BBC reported that uh, more than 1 million Americans and Canadians are facing Christmas Day without power as a massive winter storm continues to pummel North America. A bomb cyclone when atmospheric pressure plummets has brought snow, strong winds and freezing temperatures. Nearly 250 million are affected and at least 19 deaths have been linked to the storm that extends more than 2,000 miles or 3,200 kilometers from Quebec to Texas. Thousands of flights have been cancelled. The western U.S. state of Montana was the worst hit by the cold, with temperature dropping to minus 50 Fahrenheit, which is minus 45 centigrades. Near whiteout conditions have been reported in Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Michigan. In the city of Buffalo, New York State, the U.S. National Weather Service reported zero-mile visibility. In the Pacific Northwest, some residents ice skated on frozen streets in Seattle and Portland. Coastal flooding had been seen in America's northeastern New England region, inundating communities and downing power lines. Well, to all of this tragedy, Voice of America added that in hard-hit New York State, Governor Kathy Hochul deployed the National Guard to Erie County and its many its main city, Buffalo, where authorities had emergency services, uh, said emergency services were not functioning. Late Saturday, the National Weather Service warned that blizzard conditions in the Great Lakes region caused by lake effect snow would come and continue into Christmas Day and that there would be only slow moderation of temperatures into Monday. One couple in Buffalo, which sits across the border from Canada, told AFP that with the roads completely impassable, they would not be making a 10-minute drive to see their family for Christmas. It is tough, they said, because the conditions are just so bad, a lot of fire departments aren't even sending out trucks for coal, said 40 year Rebecca Bortolin. Her fiancé, Ali Lawson, is having back pain but plans to tough it out at home because driving to the hospital is too dangerous. We can currently see across the street, but last night we couldn't see past our porch, Lawson said. The bomb cyclone, winter, cyclone winter storm, one of the fiercest in decades, had already forced the cancellation of more than 3,300 U.S. flights Saturday and a delay of nearly 7,500 more a day after nearly 6,000 were scrapped, according to tracking website flightaware.com. Transportation Secretary Pete Budgig tweeted Saturday that the most extreme disruptions are behind us as airline and airport operations gradually recover, words that travels stranded at airports including Atlanta, Chicago, Denver, Detroit and New York were whole, holding on to. New York City resident Zach Kyler, whose flight home to Houston on Thursday had been postponed, then cancelled twice, this week already was pretty steamed about the chaos. The 35 years old now hopes to reach his loved ones by Sunday. I'm just glad I'll get to see my family for Christmas, he told AFP. Road ice and white out conditions also led to the closure of some of the nation's busiest transport routes, including the cross-country Interstate 70, parts of which were temporarily shut down in Colorado and Kansas. The National Weather Service warned about lethal conditions and urged residents in affected areas to remain indoors. On Friday, it said wind chills had sent temperatures plunging to minus 48 degrees Celsius. At one point during the day, nearly 1.7 million customers were without electricity in the biting cold, according to tracker poweroutage.us. No power had largely been restored by late Saturday. People were urged to conserve electricity and rolling blackouts were instituted in some parts of the country, including in North Carolina. 
Weather officials forecast that dangerously cold conditions would continue throughout the central and eastern United States over the weekend before temperatures returned to more normal weather next week. Canadian authorities have also issued severe weather warnings. Hundreds of thousands were left without power in Ontario and Quebec provinces, while many flights were cancelled in Vancouver, Toronto and Montreal. Via rail, Canada's passenger service said that all trains from Toronto to Ottawa and Montreal would be suspended on Christmas due to a train derailment, while extreme weather conditions forced many other cancellations. In the U.S., Transportation departments in several plain states reported near zero visibility whiteouts, ice covered roads and blizzard conditions and strongly urged residents to stay home. Drivers were being warned not to take to the roads even as the nation reached what it usually is its busiest time of year for travel. Meteorologist Kelsey McEwen in Toronto tweeted that waves of up to 8 meters were reported in Lake Erie, while in Ohio's Fairport Harbor, winds gusted to 120 uh, uh, kilometers per hour, according to the new WS. The new WS also warned against traveling in the current weather conditions. The life-threatening cold temperatures and in combination with dangerous wind chills will create a potentially life-threatening hazard for travelers that become stranded individuals that work outside, livestock and domestic pets, its advisory said. Friends, this has been a massive snowstorm now for Christmas season. While humans often seem to think otherwise, (laughs) God is in charge and controls the weather. Please notice how God says that and warns humans about that in his very word. Uh, Psalm 148 verse 8. The Bible may explain who is in control of the weather. Fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds, fulfilling his word. God intervenes in weather to work out his purpose among nations, friends. Plagues of disastrous weather are a warning to humankind. Weather, for the most part, operates according to natural laws. Damaging weather patterns sometimes develop. God simply may not choose to intervene to stop them because of nations, various sins and idolatry. The Bible reveals God also directly intervenes to cause weather plagues to warn certain nations. Amos 4.9 I have smitten you with blasting and mildew, yet have you not returned unto me, says the Lord. He, in his great purpose, may also allow Satan, the God of this world, as we learn from 2 Corinthians 4.4, to have have a role producing calamitous weather for man's ultimate learning. You can see Job chapter 1. Scripture is clear, friends, that God controls the weather and sometimes provides extreme weather for correction, and that includes snowy weather. Notice also Psalm 148, verse 7 and 8. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all the depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. Verse 5. God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things which we cannot comprehend. For he says to the snow, fall on the earth. Go to verse 9, please. From the chamber of the south comes the whirlwind and cold from the scattering wind of the north. By the breath of God, ice is given and the broad waters are frozen. Also with moisture, he saturates the thick clouds. He scatters his bright clouds, and they swirl about being turned by his guidance that they may do whatever he commands them on the face of the whole earth. He causes it to come, whether for correction or for his land or for mercy. Uh, I read this passage from Job chapter 37, verse 5 and 6, and verses 9 through 13. And then in Job, in chapter 38, verse 22 and 23, Have you entered the treasury of snow? Or have you seen the treasury of hail, which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? God asked Job. 
So snow is something that God controls. The Bible repeatedly warns, especially in the Hebrew scriptures, that various sins will result in destructive weather. Weather is not as random as most people seem to want to believe. Back in 2009, there was a book published by Bob Thiel in which he mentioned the following was about to happen. And you can, uh, the book title is 2012 and the Rise of the Secret Sect. It was published by Nazarene Books in 2009. And here's the quote, relevant quote from that book. Considering all of the natural disasters such as earthquakes, floods, food shortages and economic problems in the past few years, perhaps this would be a good time to explain that the Bible show that these problems were expected to occur prior to the Great Tribulation. Those outside the Bible have sometimes referred to a time such as this as a time of transition or chaos. There will be a generation that will experience end-time events, beginning with sorrows, including the Great Tribulation, heavenly signs, and finally the return of Jesus Christ, Matthew 24, verse 5 through 34. Mark recorded the same account on this of this time from his perspective. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verse 3 through 11, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Daniel asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign, uh, the sign when all these things will be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, or I am the preacher of him, and they will deceive many. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be earthquakes in various places, and there will be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. But watch out for yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues, and you will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. And the gospel must be first preached to the nations, but when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak, but whatever is given you in that hour, speak that, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And thus, in both Matthew and Mark, it is clear that the time called the great beginning of the beginning of sorrows precedes the great tribulation. Please, you can notice in Mark's uh, account that he uses the term troubles. Troubles would seem to indicate economic and political problems, in addition, in addition to those specifically mentioned, such as wars, famines, natural disasters, and pestilences. So, uh, this book that I've just quoted from was published because it was consistent with Bible prophecy. Well, we have seen, uh, we have been seeing indeed odd weather patterns and some have been concerned about related food shortages. Is the idea that God controls the weather and uses it to affect humans relatively new to Christianity? Well, friends, no. Back in the third century, uh, uh, Church of God Bishop or Pastor Theophilus of Antioch wrote, He is God alone who made light out of darkness and brought forth light from the treasures and formed the chambers of the south wind and the treasure houses of the deep and the bounds of the, of the seas and the uh, treasures of snow and hailstorms collecting the waters in the storehouses of the deep and in, 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 in the darkness in his treasure and bringing forth the sweet and desirable and pleasant light out of his treasures who causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain who sends forth his thunder to terrify and foretell by the lightning the peal of the thunder. This is from Theophilus of, uh, Theophilus of Antioch to out to Lucas book 1, chapter 4. Friends, God has long used weather and early Christians realized this. 
So should modern one, should modern Christians realize about it? Even though these kind of storms are not the end of the world, extreme weather should be a wake-up call to repent. The warning, warnings from the Bible are going out, but many will ignore them. Many will ignore them, but will you? Will you ignore them, friends? Thank you for listening to our program. And until next time, goodbye, friends.